as I was saying, all three finals so far, two straight games. Next up is men's doubles, and it's the number five seeds Takoro Hoki and Yugo Kobayashi of Japan, who were silver medalists at the last edition of the World Championships. Up against the number 16 seeds Herji Ting and Tan Chiang of China. When we look at the men's doubles draw from the quarter-final stage, uh, there was only three of the top eight seeds made it through the two quarter-final. But six different nationalities. There's two pairs from Japan and two from Malaysia. There we go. Uh, the two Japanese pairs played each other in the quarter-final stage. So by semi-final, it was uh, four pairs from four different countries. For the Danes, right at the bottom of the door there, where they became the first Europeans to medal for seven years by the virtue of their semi final. But the two pairs in the final, the Japanese and the Chinese combinations. For the Japanese pair, well, since the seedings were done, and they have gone up to a career high of four in the world. And quite remarkably, this is their fifth final in their last six tournaments. They have been outstanding in the world events since the Olympic Games. And of course, they didn't qualify for the Olympics. They were the third ranked pair from Japan. You can only have two pairs in the Olympic Games. So since then, they have been become a world force in men's doubles. Led out by Takuro Hoki. His partner is the left-hander, Hugo Kobayashi. The three titles they've won this year, the Denmark Super 1000, the Indonesian Masters 750, and the World Tour Finals as well. Well, Her Ji Ting and Tan Chiang. Prior to these World Championships in individual competition, had only played one match. And that was the Denmark Open when they lost in the very first round. And they lost to the pair that went on to win the Denmark Open. And it happens to be their opponents of today. So, the last time they met, was that first round in Denmark and in fact it was the first time that Hoki and Kobayashi had beaten the Chinese uh, pair in their sixth meeting so it's now the seventh meeting between these two pairs so, the Chinese pair won the toss of the coin and then chose to either serve or receive. One couldn't quite see, which means that the Japanese pair have been able to change choose eights. And we're looking first of all at the left handed Yugo Kobayashi, 26 years of age, born in Miyagi, prefecture on the east coast of Hongshu. As I was telling you, they've just got up to their career high of number four for the second consecutive week. And their career high. This is their third world championships, and in Basel two years ago, they were the number 12 seed and won the silver loss to Mohamed Hassan and Kendra Sekiwan in three games in the final. Takora Hoki is also 26 years of age, born in Yamaguchi, and it has been a fabulous run of success for this Japanese pair over these autumn months. Well, they went uh, to three games in their second match here in Welva. 
against the former world champion, Lu Cheng, but with a different partner, Wan Kansiai. Uh, then in the quarterfinal, having beaten the Grimley brothers in the third round, in the quarterfinal they beat their teammates, Matsuo and Takahuchi. Semi-final was against the number nine seeds from Malaysia, Ong Yu Sin and Tiu Yi Yi. And that was very convincing indeed. So to her Ji Ting, he's 23 years of age from Shouwu. And they are currently at 24 on the world ranking, have been as high as 10, but they're the highest active pair from China because the top two Chinese men's doubles pairs have recently retired as partnerships. They're playing in their third world championships, Tang Tian is also 23 years of age from Nanjing in the Jiangsu province which is where we had the World Championships of 2018. So looking at their match and their route through to today's final, the Chinese pair, in the second round they had three games with Hemming and Stored from England and uh, they had three games in the third round against the number four seeds, the Olympic bronze medalists, Cha and So. In the quarterfinal, they beat the silver medalists from the Rio Olympic Games, Govi Shem and Tan Wei Kyung. That was two straight games. And the semi-final was three games against Kim Astrup and Anas Rasmussen of Denmark. So Jakob Simberg of Denmark is our umpire for this one. Cornelia Schroeder of Germany is the service judge. I don't think I've seen a match without Cornelia Schroeder calling the service fault when she's been the <laughs> service judge. Ladies and gentlemen, no. Very on my right, Takuro Hoki, Yugo Kobayashi, Japan. <laughs> and on my left, Tan Kyang, He Yi Ting, China. Taguro Hoki to serve, to he eating, level, play. So the silver medalists from two years ago, nearest to us, Takuro Hoki and Yugo Kobayashi. Yuji Ting and Tan Chiang. Our start as the underdog, surely what we give the run of four of the Japanese pair in recent tournaments. Couldn't agree with you more. It's it's um, it's it's a very um, interesting men's doubles final. The two Japanese in the picture in the red T-shirts, Hoki and Kobayashi. It, as you said, what an autumn they have had. The way they've played over the last three months. I, I still remember when we were sitting in in Finland and and even in Denmark at the uh, at the Thomas Cop and we were talking about this partnership you know they still need a lot and not as good as the other two Japanese pairs that used to be on the circuit and all that and out of the blue yeah suddenly they're playing fantastic badminton yeah so, so it, you know I, I never saw that coming or, or at least that quickly no and of course the Chinese pair is is, is a massive surprise they haven't played well um, for a long time, I think. And, yeah. And then, you know, suddenly standing here in, in a final. I think the, the breakthrough for the Chinese combination was when they beat uh, Aaron Chan so we... Yeah. I think that was a yeah. good one. That yeah. was a very good one. Uh, of course, we, we can't let it go without mentioning that the world number ones and the defending champions, the number one and two seeds in the men's doubles, both from Indonesia and both had to pull out yes. because the entire Indonesian team uh, pulled out of these world championships. So, but you know, you can only beat the opposition that's here. And, but I agree that the Chinese pair is a surprise, a surprise to me that they've done so well. Yeah, and Indonesia having a third pair, Ocean and Adianta as well. So, you yes. know, they, they are very, very strong in the men's doubles. Yeah. So. Of course, that has dented the discipline quite a lot. Yeah. 
But somehow, I still think that uh, Hockey and Kobayashi, they would have been in this final. They yeah. have played really, really well. Absolutely. A little bit more doubtful whether Virgi Ting and Tang Chan would have been there. No. Oh, he looks a little nervous today, Virgi Ting. I saw, I saw the opening uh, of the men's doubles last night between the Chinese pair and, and the Danes and, and I must say they all four looked really, yes. really they nervous. Were. It was like they didn't know where to stand, what to do yeah. and it took a while for them to settle in. Lucky neck cord from Kobayashi. So, okay, fun fact of the day for you, Morton. 26th staging of the World Championships. And uh, in the men's doubles, this is the 16th time that we've had at least one left-hander in the men's doubles final. That is staggering. 64% of all World Championship finals has featured a left-hander. And when you consider that it's 10 or 11 percent of the population are left-handed so they have such high numbers in the men's doubles discipline contesting world finals is remarkable but it is an advantage to have a left and a right-hander it is there's no doubt about it i guess you you have this you have other combinations that you can play have never won gold in this discipline, men's doubles. Standing an awesome chance today. They do, don't they? In fact, there's only one country that's won gold across all five disciplines, and that's China. the player who can make a difference in the partnership, her duty. Yes, it will be interesting to see what China will do, and for that matter also Indonesia, what they will do in the men's doubles when it comes to future partnerships. Mm. It seems like everything is up in the air. Yeah. Japan, however, seems to be more or less settled. Oh, so this fault called. <laughs> you can put one mark on it. Yeah. Called on Herji Ting too high, above the 1.15 metre mark. He's trying that, thought that his partner was going to play it. And it's a five point advantage for Hoki and Kobayashi at the mid game interval here in the open game. Turn Kim Hurt, Japanese women's doubles coach. 
If the Chinese pair are going to turn this around, Morton, how are they going to do it? What have they got to do? That's a good question because I think they are in trouble when it comes to their attack because the defence of Kobayashi and Hoki is just so solid. However, I still think that's the only way forward and it means that Ho Jit Ting really have to step up at the front of the court and uh, Tan Yi Chang have to work so hard just like this on the front of the court and on from the back of the court. But it's, it's going to be very, very difficult. Mm. This is it. This is the formation they need to play. Oh, in. They had two or three chances at the right formation and did not manage to capitalise on it. And uh, I think that's going to be the big problem yeah. for, for the Chinese pair. It, it's so tough for them to score against the Japanese. So then the next the next step is of course all around the service situation. Have to add even more pressure. Well, errors like that aren't helping the Chinese cause. Well, Chinese coach getting very animated. He was gesturing so violently he almost <laughs> fell off his chair. <laughs> yeah, no, the... Yeah, one of the deputy referees is having a word with him. That was a good service return. Yeah. All out attack and then being very, very good around the service situation. But that means that they have to dominate Hoki at the front of the court, and that's not going to be easy. And one thing I really like about the uh, Japanese pair, apart from many other things, but I, I really like the fact that uh, they don't seem to be nervous. They just play yeah. their, their style of play and they, they play it to their best most of the time. Yeah. And uh, go on about their business as, you know, whether it's the first round or it's the final they play, they play the same. Yeah. Well, that calmness is paying dividends at the moment. Whoa! Seventeen. Seven. Oh, this is just a demonstration at the moment. Two points away from the opening game. We're only 13 minutes into the match. Oh, it's shots. Yeah, service error. Service over. 8, 19. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. 9, 19. Ten, 
Emphasizing the point you were making earlier, that they have to hit in the downward direction. 11 19. Yeah, there was great elevation on that jump from Herji Ting. Yeah, the thing when I say that they need to go on the attack is because I don't think their defense will be holding up if they were starting to lift like a bit here. Yeah. The defense is simply not strong enough to withhold that pressure or withstand that pressure so they have to go on the attack yeah so game point opportunities for Hopi and Kobayashi and it's gone long turn is over 12 20 Well, I think he may have broken the strings of his racket, Kobayashi, with that final smash. Yeah, racket gets popped away, but they have the opening game, 21-12. Oh, that it happened in double quick time, 15 minutes only for the opening game. Chinese pair do in response to this brilliant play from Hookie and Kobayashi. Time will tell, but they really have to find some drastic answers. Oh, challenge here. Very early in the game, first rally of the second game, very early to challenge. Yep, and they've only got one challenge left. Challenge unsuccessful, one challenge remaining. One low. Wait. We haven't had many long rides, have we? No. Yeah, look at how Hoki straight away after the block is moving forward, closing down the net, and it's putting a lot of pressure on Herji Ting, which at the end of the day just ensures that he's, he's making a mistake. And that's another opportunity there where the Chinese can make sure that uh, Hokkien 
Kobayashi is playing their shots from below the tape. And that was a fine example of it. But here is happening to themselves. Oh, more strings gone. Yeah, there was a miss hit. Shots. Yeah. They really are very, very short. And I suspect here in the second game is even lower. Yeah. They haven't really got into the second game yet. No, but it's just, yeah. again, this sort of very erratic. it early, the midcourt shot and then leaps to play the round the head smash. Athletic player is Kobayashi. Hoji Ting and Tan Chang here in the second game. Five four up and you know they, there's a yeah. chance here. Yeah. Oh, service foul call this time on Tan Chiang. Both of the Chinese players have been faulted. Swings of his racket and doing so. I do wonder, Morton, if uh, as we get near, or if we get near to the Japanese pair looking as if they might win this, if they don't have a big lead, I wonder if the enormity of what they're about to achieve might uh, suddenly hit home and make them feel a little nervous. Yeah, but that's. It, I I completely understand what you're saying, but but somehow that's what has impressed me quite a lot over these three months. Is that they haven't with, been affected. No, they just go out there and do their business. But you know, it is a world championship final, so you never know. Yeah, and no pair from Japan has ever won men's doubles gold, so you know it's not just for their world title, it's for the country as well, it would be a record. Yeah. Good shot from Tang Chian. Yeah, good placement. Six, 
Interesting. It is interesting. Because not only is the Chinese pair settled into the match now, they're playing a far more positive, aggressive game. I think there's things going through the mind of the Japanese pair. Drop just below the tank and that was enough. But I also think it requires that um, Chang is, is playing really well in the uh, Chinese partnership. Because if he's not doing that, then the pressure will be too much. But I think he kept it together quite nicely in the last five minutes or so. Haven't made that many mistakes. Well saved. Did do well there, didn't he? He did initially. Oh. Oh, that's brilliant. Oh. Oh, yeah. That's well played. What a smash! get on the attack first. Nine, ten. When Hoke is at the front of the court, Chinese pair are in big trouble. Three points to get back level. I think this was important, you know, before the mid-game interval. It was very important. And Hoki should have put that one away. <laughs> Play singles for a while. Yeah, and they won the rally. Well done to Koro Hoki. As his partner, Kobayashi rushed off court to change his racket. And on a run of five straight points, it is the number five seed, Hoki and Kobayashi, who will have the advantage at the mid-game interval. Good play by the left-handed Kobayashi. Yeah, they're on a very good run here, the Japanese, aren't they? Yeah, six straight points. And it's got to be stopped 
if you look at it from a Chinese point of view. Well, I feel that Hoki is on her own now. I know Kobayashi has played really well. Yeah. But Hoki needs to follow up and be part of it. And I think he's sort of getting into the groove here now. Oh, see you again. You're right. See you again. Yeah. So quick in on the net. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Coach, coach is not happy. No. I don't think it can help the players to see your coach shaking your head at you. No. That's not going to help your course. See you once again. Yeah. This is nine straight points. And the quality of the defence of uh, Tan Kang is, is not good enough. Well, the run comes to an end at nine points, but uh, I would be very happy <laughs> yeah. if it was me playing, getting nine points in a row. And it will now take a huge effort from the Chinese pair to get back from this. That's good. Don't you think too close to the net? One more time, you should have intercepted. Yeah, good placement of the smash at the right hip of Tan Chiang. Yeah, once again exposed in his defence. Flat, it's gone long. So it requires some good serving here. Backhand. Look at that backswing. There is yeah. hardly any backswing on that shot. Wow, that's really well played. That's it. Floating the net down. Yeah. Pokey storming in. And Kobayashi then coming closer behind him. Yes. Here we see. Look at that. You're so right. He's moving up behind Hokey straight away. Knows that a possible chance is coming. Chinese 
Ting and Tang Chia. Their opponents just two points away from the title. Oh, oh, oh was that a little bit nervous? I think so, yes. Yeah. He thought Kobayashi was going to tie sh shoelaces suddenly when he was refused to go out to tower. That would have given him a yellow card. Oh, yes, good play by Yugo Kobayashi. And now the Japanese pair on the verge of victory. Three championship points. Three opportunities to become world champions. Yeah, one saved, two to go. They can do it. Yeah, they can do it. But it requires a bit. Well, he's got faulted twice, has yeah. Tang Chiang. He needs to keep his service low enough. It would just be terrible if this was a fault. Good serve. That's it. That's it. And that is it on their second match point opportunity, Takora Hoki and you about go Kobayashi become the first pair from Japan to win the World Championship gold medal in the men's doubles discipline. 21-12, 21-18 against the number 16 seeds Herji Ting and Tan Chiang. 37 minutes and they are the new world champions. Yeah, they have deserved it. They have played really well lately and absolute favourites today to win and they played perfectly. Yeah. Their fourth title of the year when playing in their fifth final in their last six tournaments. To say that it's been a run of good form very much an understatement. The final shot from Kobayashi. And world champions. I think we can safely say he's pretty happy with that. <laughs> Definitely. But he needs to practice that. You know, the Danes are doing better. <laughs> On the celebrations. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Their confirmation of the scoreline, 21-12, 21-18 in 37 minutes. Well, 
players from a six different country win gold in the men's doubles discipline now at the World Championships. Indonesia, of course, the most successful nation in this discipline. Ten golds, China eight, Korea four, Denmark two, and the other nation, possibly the most surprising gold medal of all time, Morton. United States of America. Yeah. When Tony Gunawan and Howard Bart won yeah. gold in Anaheim in 2005. Five, yes, it was. But with the Indonesians missing, I'm with you, Morton. I felt that this pair well, from Japan the were Spotify. the favourites to win, despite being seeded at only five. But the seeding done uh, long before they had they, their run of good fortune. Yes. But, but as I say, even with the pairs from Indonesia being here, I still think that they could have won it. Yes, absolutely, because they beat uh, Gideon and Sukamolio, the current world number ones, twice in yeah. Bali, didn't yeah. they? The first week we were there, the Indonesian Masters, and then at the World Tour Finals. Yeah, which was the third week. Yeah. So, a lucky fan gets... I don't think that was a racket. Was that one of his shirts? I'm not quite sure. But anyway, there's a fan will treasure whatever was thrown by Takora Hoki. So, history is made. First pair from Japan to win gold in the men's doubles. Well, we should spare a thought for the Chinese combination, He Ji Ting and Tang Jiang. 10 med medals in the last 12 World Championships. That's not bad, is it, for China? No, that's good. It's very good. Including, prior to this year, six golds from the last 11 World Championships. So, uh, full high fun. Yep, they won three. Yeah. Chai Yun. And they won four world titles, and they were part of And Liu Cheng and Zhang Nan. Li Zhenghui and Li Liu Cheng. Malaysians on you sin and to ye it's the first Malaysian medal in men's doubles for eleven years since Kuki and Piat and Tan Yun Kyung in Paris in two thousand and ten. Representing China, He Ji Ting and Tan Chiang. 
who few would have put down as medal prospects prior to the start of this week. Alvarez, one of the biggest surprises in the, in the men's doubles events this year. Really. I don't think anybody has said The gold medals to Hoki and Kobayashi. A first ever gold in the men's doubles discipline for Japanese players. And they won it in style. COVID protocols, the players must take the medals themselves and then... Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's Rasmus, yeah. joker as always. As always, as always. He's such a great man to have in the team, I can assure yeah. you. Everybody's told me that. Yeah. Uh, Chinese players putting the medals around their own necks. Perhaps a sign of the disappointment. Whereas the gold medalists, the two players, place those gold medals round each other's necks. Well, I don't think they should be taking off their masks just yet. No, they're all popping them back on again. Yeah, that yeah, was too soon. Yeah. Still have a lot of presentations. Trophies of four sorts, souvenirs. Yeah, just going back to the point you were making about Herji Ting and Tang um, we wouldn't have expected them in the final. You're right, it was a, a big surprise, but I have my doubts whether they will continue to play together. I have my doubts too. As I say, I said earlier, I think uh, what's happening in China and in Indonesia, you know, the coming months, whenever the uh, ranking is getting on frozen and all that, that will sort of spark new partnerships, I think. Yeah. And those two nations, they have a lot of things that they need to sort of have a look at. Yeah. Denmark Badminton Association is also looking at the same in the men's doubles. They're also looking at their partnerships, but I, I strongly suspect that uh, Kinesco and Anna Skorvaskis is going to continue to get
Doubles World Championship medalists. So, with the conclusion of the men's doubles, we have just one more final to come. And it's the men's singles, it's the former world number one Kitambi Shrikantha of India up against Loken Yu of Singapore. Thank you. 